Hello, uh, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, today's date, it is June 25th uh, of 2017. This is going to be, a, I hope, a short video. Uh, and I'm just going to talk about a few, a few little items for some reason. Hope you find them interesting. Uh, I won't dwell on this, but I'll put a link below to this uh, video here that you see. The Toy Story Zero, the true story of Andy's dad and Woody's origin. I I was surprised when I saw when and I think I, had, I haven't been to a movie in a in year, I mean, you know, actually to a movie theater, but so I'm not sure how long after the first Toy Story came out and was available online. But I loved the Toy Story, uh, Toy Story, and the uh, characters, and I, I was even tempted to buy, a, uh, especially the uh, Spaceman. But I was even tempted to have like have one sitting on my my desk here, or whatever. And I loved the uh, follow-up movies also. So, uh, I'll put a link to this. I just watched this and I just linked to it on my Facebook page, but I'll put a link directly to uh, uh, this video. If you're a fan of the movie, like I am, you may want to watch that. Um, I wanted to, for some reason, I don't know why, wanted to mention something that I cannot, that I just can't comprehend, and it's amazing, and maybe you can explain it to me. Um, and that's how President Trump <laughs> is able, was able as a candidate and is able now to do what he does, well he hasn't done much, to, to say what he does. It's just amazing. Uh, and I don't understand and comprehend how that is, how that's possible. Maybe you can explain it, uh, maybe in the comment section, if you have an idea. Um, I'm an old man, so anyway, uh, Edwin Mus Musky, Musky uh, was trying to become the Democratic candidate for president uh, back when. Um, 1972. That sounds like a long time ago, and I guess it was a long time ago. And he was someplace on the East Coast. I, I really haven't read this. I just put the, I'm, I guess I'll put the link below to this. I don't know. Uh, anyway, um, it says here he was six foot four. Uh, so he was outside speaking in the cold weather someplace. I guess there was some snow. Anyway, it looked like he teared up, I guess. And that was the end of him. You know, the press reported or whatever that uh, he had tears in his eyes. That was it. His, <laughs> his running for presidency was done. He had tears in his eyes. Um, Now, of course, we had uh, what the Republican who was uh, Speaker of the House, Baynard. Anyway, who would cry if he got a, if he got if he had a spot on his tie, he would cry. Of course, he wasn't running for president of the United States, but uh, that was the uh, the end of Muskie's run for the presidency. Uh, 
Howard Dean, you, you probably do remember him and because this is more recent. I, uh, I did not care for Howard Dean. Uh, just something, you know, I mean, to show how really old I am, back before, back when Eisenhower, President Eisenhower was, or when General Eisenhower was picking a vice presidential candidate and he picked, was going to pick and did pick Richard Nixon to be his vice presidential uh, running mate. I just could not stand Richard Nixon. I just, there was just something about him I did not, you know, did not like. I always felt that he was dishonest. There's just something about him I did not like. Uh, and with Howard Dean, uh, something I just did not like about him. Um, a well, my my oldest daughter was a fan of his, and with I don't want to, she, she wasn't on his staff. Well, anyway, she was one of the people who was working, going with his campaign around the nation and working, assisting, uh, promoting him uh, as he moved around the United States. Uh, so you may, re you probably remember uh, I don't know if they show whether they're going to show this or not. Probably not. His, I forget where it was, but there was a crowd there and he, something happened. I don't know whether he got more votes or something happened. Some good news or whatever. And so, He's yelling at the, you know, yelling it out at the crowd or whatever, and video is, you know, made of it, and then that video is, appears on television, and in the video, because even now the Republicans always use, if they mention anything about uh, Howard Dean, they use that picture, a picture of him, looks like screaming. You know, with a uh, no, he didn't have a microphone, or uh, and he's screaming, and that and they use that picture, you know, against him. But anyway, he was yelling to the crowd. That was the end. That when that video came out of him yelling to the crowd, that was the end of his presidential run. That was it. That defined him from that day. Even, you know, he became uh, head of the Democratic National uh, Committee and uh, ran that for a, a while, I guess, at, uh, from 2005 to 2009. And I think everybody said that he did, I mean, not the Republicans, but I think that the Democrats, you know, felt that he did a really good job as being head of the DNC. But that was the end of his presidential aspirations. That was it. He was done. My oldest daughter, LaDonna, when I visited Washington, D.C., and we were sitting around family talking, and I said, oh, and uh, I mentioned, you know, I mentioned that and everything, and I said, what's the story, you know, what's the story behind that? And she said that it was a large room filled with people, and that uh, Howard Dean wasn't ex wasn't expected to make any kind of any statement in that room, or announcement, or speak to the crowd or anything like that. There was no audio visual equipment set up, uh, no microphone or PA system set up. 
uh, so when this news broke, and I forget what the news was, you know, some good news or something about the campaign or something. And so he was yelling out to the crowd, and he had to do it at the top of his lungs uh, to tell the, you know, whatever. And the, I think even the people who were there, the camera people who were making the video, probably because they were in the, that environment, and it didn't seem strange for somebody to be yelling, really for trying to be heard. So they, I don't think they really, and, and maybe not, you know. So then they get this video back, and then they, they're looking for some video they can use. Wow. Oh, wow. He looks fucking crazy, doesn't he? And they put that on, and that was the end of his. I do not understand uh, how Donald Trump, every day it seems, he does something that any other person, if they said that and they were running for president, that would have been the end of their, that would have been it. They would just, people would just say, look at that, that that'd be the end. You know, I can't remember, I mean, every day uh, he's, and then of course after being elected, uh, every other day he does something that would be absolutely devastating to uh, someone else. I mean, just think if uh, President Obama said or did some of the things that uh, President Trump does. Just think of the reaction uh, that would happen. And so that's, that is totally amazes me that, that, you know, President Trump got a large mass of, of votes, a uh, deciding factor for sure from the uh, religious right, right wing, uh, you know, the uh, church people, the um, family values people. <laughs> Remember, uh, I happen to have small hands, which camera, you know, uh, well, they're small hands, I should, I should have a camera that makes my hands look big. But uh, remember his thing up there on the podium and him talking about that he has large hands, which means he... And it's just amazing that... So if you can explain that to me, how how is it that, you know... Donald Trump saying that he could go out on uh, Wall Street or in front of the Trump Tower or whatever, and uh, he could kill somebody, and and his people would still support him. And him saying that uh, his supporters were dumb people, and those were uh, great because those were the kind of people that you know that. I mean, all these things that he says, one of those things would be the end of any other candidate. So it is just amazing. So I think that's all I wanted to bring, because that was just on my mind. But I'll put, I'll put the links to Howard Dean and Ed Muskie, because I think I have, yeah, I do, actually. I'll put a link to, no, that's not it. Well, anyway, I saw a link that talked about just, uh, if I can find it, I'll put it below. Here's my Facebook page, and here's the uh, link, which I'm also going to put below for this toy story thing about, if you ever wondered what happened to Andy's dad. Where is Andy's dad? This will explain it. Uh, let me do, uh, let me, uh, I keep you updated. I'm still using one monitor. And I am still using the Windows 10 computer and the Asus Chrome box. And then I have this, I can hit this button and down here and uh, switch between them. I... Let's see. 
you may notice the microphone is in a different position because I try always to free up workspace on this desk. It just gets cluttered. And this blue Yeti sitting on the desk was just always in the way I had to. So I, I put my uh, put it on a boom. It's not really the best microphone for a for a boom. But I now have it off the uh, desk. And uh, I'm uh, really bad about it, but I'm updating my ham radio here. And I've got the... Uh, so I can do the software. Let's see where that is. Well, let's see here. So I'm plugging this USB in. I can minimize her. Where's my, where's the, where am I? I'm lost. There I am. So I'm plugging this in. Turn on the radio. Let's move this up a little bit here. I'm gonna read the data in. Now the data that's on my phone or on my uh, ham radio here is gonna come into this. And I need I need update. I haven't updated. I haven't had my radio on except for the last two or three days. I haven't had it on for my ham radio on for months. Okay, so that data is in. That's all the data I have in this radio. And actually, there are uh, which camera are we on? This one here. These at least these are the repeaters. These are within ten miles of me. I need to put those in. And so I'm uh, going to have to type them in by hand. I paid for one, a number, I paid for a couple programs that uh, have ham radio repeaters, the data, this data in there. And uh, One of them would let me just import the data. All you know, I could decide what bands I wanted the data in my radio from, and then I could just it would just I wouldn't have to type anything in. It would just I could just pull it over. Well, I can't log in for some reason. Doesn't accept my password. I I put down that I forgot my password, which I didn't, but I put down that I forgot my password. It sends me the code to re to put in a new password. I I do that. It doesn't take it. So I'm just gonna end up probably having to type in. Uh, this radio is really inexpensive. This was I think about a hundred dollars, and they're less than a hundred dollars now. It's a dual band ham radio. Uh, there is a new model that's um, tri-band. This is a two meter and 440. And there is uh, a tri-band, which is a 220 band also in there. And it's a little bit more than $100. I think it's about $130. And I'd like to get that and all the accessories. Uh, I think everything comes with it though, but everything that works with this will work with the... Uh, so I want to get that eventually here. Anyway, uh, this is Sunday morning. 
and I think I'll take a nap. It is 6 a.m. So, well, I guess I'll upload this first and then take a nap. So, uh, thank you very much for watching.